In this video, we are going to add some compositing effects to our render. So here I'm in the compositing tab and I'm going to come over here to my output properties and you can see that my resolution is set to 1920 by 1080. Here I'm going to come over to my layer properties and for the data, I want to make sure that I enable this missed data pass because we're going to use this in our compositing network. Now that I've enabled this option, I do need to run a quick render again. Okay, so here I have my render. I can close this out. And so under the compositing tab, I'm going to enable use nodes. And so now I can see my render layer as well as a composite node. Now I need to create a view node and a quick way to do that is just to use the keyboard shortcut, control shift and left click here on the image output of my render layer. You can see that creates my viewer. Now with the viewer node selected, if I come over here to the view, I can choose to fit the background image to the view. I can also move and scale this as well. But for now, we're just going to fit this to our view. So now let's create a defocus effect. So I'm going to hit shift A to create a node. And in my search, I'm just going to start to type in defocus. And here we have this defocus node. This is what we're going to use. So let's zoom in here just a bit on the nodes. So let's take the defocus and place it between the render layer image and the viewer. And I'm going to use my mist data to drive the Z depth. I can take the mist output and plug this here into my viewer so we can take a look at what this represents. And you can see this is basically like a depth pass. And like I said, we're going to take this mist and we're going to plug this to the Z image input. I can now adjust the Z scale. So I'm going to start to dial up this value. And you can see that we'll now be able to start to interactively create some depth of field here to our scene. So I'm going to set this to a, a pretty high value. And again, I'm just looking to see what range I want to work with. And so here I'm going to go ahead and just set this to a value of 300. Now the quality is pretty low and that's because I have this preview enabled. So if I just uncheck this, I get a pretty nice depth of field result. Now for the bokeh type, I can change this from circular to hexagonal. So this is the exact effect that I'm going for. And as you can see, we were able to build this up very interactively as a post-process effect here inside Blender. So now I'm going to do just a little bit of color balance. So I'll hit Shift A and we'll go to color and I'm going to choose to create a color balance node. So let me just rearrange my node network here and I'm going to take the color balance. I'm going to insert that between the render layer and my defocus effect. Now I can go in and start to play around with my lift, gamma and gain. So here I'm looking at just these adjustments to the lift, gamma, and gain to add just a little bit of contrast, maybe just a little bit more punch to the image. This stage is very subjective, but it's really cool that you can do this as a post effect here inside of Blender. I can also stylize the look by introducing some color. So here I've added just a few slight adjustments to my gamma and gain to give myself an overall warmer tint to the image. And you can see with just a few nodes, we're able to create some high quality effects for our render. So now that I've completed the compositing work, what I can do is just select the viewer itself and we'll come over here to item and I can choose to just save the image here. This concludes our course on rendering substance materials in Blender. To recap, I'd like to take a look at the following key points. Substance Designer can be set to automatically export when outputs change. This allows you to work on iterations quickly and you can auto reload the maps in Blender using Node Wrangler. Using the same model size establishes the proper ratio between mesh dimension and height scale. This allows you to use the same height scale in Substance Designer and Blender. You can work with adaptive subdivision and cycles by setting the feature set to experimental. I hope you enjoyed this series. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next time.